God tells us there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. So we have one God with three parts. So this verse tells us about the Trinity, or what I like to call the Godhead. Now many people will, will come to you, like I had a phone call not too long ago, a guy screaming at me on the phone saying, Don't you ever talk about the Trinity! The Trinity's not in the Bible! And I said, okay, well the doctrine is. He says, well the word's not, so you can't use the word Trinity. So some people will tell you, well the Trinity's not in the Bible, the Trinity's not in the Bible. Where does the word Trinity come from? Well, that's a word that we make up. We call it the Trinity. Uh, the triune Godhead. The triune uh, God. So a lot of people say, well the word Trinity's not in the Bible, so you can't use the word Trinity. Okay, well what word is in the Bible? The word Godhead is in the Bible. Now, I don't mind using the word Trinity. I have no problem with that. You know, the Bible doesn't use the word rapture. The word rapture is not in the Bible, but the doctrine is. So, it's not wrong to use a word that's not found in the Bible, as long as the doctrine itself is found in the Bible. But it's interesting, the word Trinity is not found in the Bible, but the word Godhead is. And so I went and I looked up the word Godhead, and guess how many times the word Godhead shows up in the Bible? Three. <laughs> so the Trinity is one God with three parts, and in the Bible, the Trinity, the word used in the Bible is Godhead, and it's, it's used three times. It shows us that God is a Trinity. He has three parts. I thought that was interesting. So Godhead is used three parts in the Bible. So let's quickly look at those. Let's go to Acts chapter 17 and verse 29. Then we'll go to Romans 1.20, then we'll go to Colossians 2.9. And I'll just show you each of the three times that the word Godhead is used in the Bible. God is a one God with three parts. He is a triune God, or He is a trinity. Acts chapter 17, verse 29, and we find the word Godhead, and it says, For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. So the Godhead. So clearly the Bible says, Do not think that God is an idol. That's what it's talking about here is the worship of idols. Uh, the heathen, the pagans in the time of Paul, they worship idols. And those idols were made of gold or of silver or of stone. And people used to uh, worship a little statue and say, oh my God, you are my God. No, no, God's not like that. God is far greater. God is the creator of all things. A piece of wood or a piece of uh, statue of, of, of gold or silver, that is not God. Our God's alive. Those things are dead. Romans chapter 1, verse 20 is the second time that we see the word Godhead. Romans chapter 1, verse 20 says, For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So here is the second time we see the term Godhead. And notice it's always a capital G, because it's the true God. In the Bible, when it's a lowercase g, well, that's the false god. And then Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9 is the last time, the third time, interesting, three times the word Godhead shows up. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9 says, For in him, the context is verse 8, Christ, so Jesus, for in him, Jesus, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So here is the Godhead, and, can, and it's uh, talking about Jesus. So included in the Godhead is Jesus Christ. So in Jesus Christ is the Godhead. So this verse tells about the Trinity or the Godhead, and uh, these three verses, Acts 17, 29, Romans 1, 20, and Colossians 2, 9, talk about the Godhead. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to talk about the Godhead or the Trinity. I'm going to tell you what it is, or basically who it is, then I'm going to try to explain how it works. And that's where we get into problems. It's so hard for us to understand how the Trinity can be. Because we are simple-minded people. We are not God. We are so far away from God. It's so hard to understand how God thinks. And it's so hard for us to think the same way. This is yet another video, another Trinitarian theologian, that I have to correct. Believe me, it saddens me to have to be correcting every single Trinitarian pastor, leader, or apologist, or theologian. It's sad, but I have to do it because they're still teaching the same lies from centuries ago. And Robert Breaker is, is the same as everyone else. 
He was taught the Trinity. He believes it, but he cannot really teach it. As you can see in this video, he overlooks or jumps over explaining uh, the Godhead verses correctly. And this he does because if he were to explain them, he would find himself in trouble. I have a video where I teach on the Godhead, and I teach that the Godhead is the divine nature of God, and it's only one being, as uh, Robert did in his video, he, he mentioned uh, that uh, his eternal power and Godhead is only one being, one God, exactly like Deuteronomy 6.4. So, it's interesting to see how Trinitarians, some are blind because of ignorance, and some are blind because of evil, because they want to continue deceiving the world. I don't think that, that Robert Breaker is like that. I think he's sincere in what he's trying to teach, but yet, in his ignorance, in his uh, darkness about this theology, he overlooks or does not explain the scriptures correctly. He, he mentions the Godhead so many times, and he says that the God is uh, three parts, and that goes against the whole teaching of the Trinity. I don't think he realizes that, that the Trinitarians do not teach that God is three parts. And that would even help us to understand the Trinity better, but no, they teach that the Trinity is, each person is God, and so together they make up the Trinity. So what this is really teaching is a unity or a compound unity. This is what the Trinitarians or the Trinity is all about. Yet they won't tell you that until you get to the very end. They don't teach one God. They teach one uh, unity of persons. One family of gods from eternity. This is really what they teach. And that is false. It is a false notion that came through by the Roman Catholic Church. And Robert Breaker is one of those, uh, uh, I call them uh, B-type Trinitarians, because they do not acknowledge that the Trinity came from the Roman Catholic Church. They bypass that, and they try to teach it in a biblical sense. But of course, because the Trinity is not a biblical doctrine, they stumble at the very word that they're teaching. And like I said, I, I don't get any gratification from correcting uh, this uh, Trinitarian pastors and leaders and apologists. But I have to do it to bring about the understanding that the Trinity doctrine, which came from Babylon, and then it was an uprising in the time of uh, the first century with Philo of Alexandria, who started teaching it and putting Bible to it, and then the anti nicene fathers, Catholic fathers, they took up the teachings of Philo and gave us the Trinity. So this is why I am able to correct every single Trinitarian apologist that's there in YouTube. If I haven't covered someone in particular, let me know in your comments so I can do a video on them too. Because it's easy to debunk, it's easy to destroy the Trinity when you know all the things, all the history and then you, you go through the scriptures and you realize they're, they're not translating or interpreting the scriptures correctly.